Hi, so uh, this is um, somewhat of a brief history of the Bible and uh, how it has come about and how we have accepted it as um, the common 66 books that we have in our uh, ubiquitous translations of the Bible. So we have 66 books in our Bibles, but when you look further back into the history of the Bible, and I have a video called The Oldest Bible in the World, which uh, speaks on the oldest Bible in the world, which is the African Bible. So the African Bible is the basis of um, the, 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 the current Bible that we have, which has more books and which has a longer history. It's about 800 years old. So when you look into the history of the Bible, um, invariably, if you look deep enough or, fer or far back enough, where you're going to end up as the basis of uh, the biblical text, you're going to end up in Africa. So this is just something that you will see when you actually do um, the digging, that you will dig and dig until you reach a certain point. And that is the point. And from there on, this is how the Jews leave Africa or the Jews leave Egypt. So uh, the Jews come out of Africa in that sense. So um, looking at uh, what is referred to as the Apocrypha books, we are talking about the hidden books that are in the Bible. So apocrypha literally means hidden books. So this is not like uh, those like conspiracy videos like hey, hidden books in the Bible. Like it actually just literally means hidden books and uh, obscure, hidden um, or under the surface. And this is what the word has uh, referred to since uh, 1534 when Martin Luther, who was a church reformer, uh, published his own version of the Bible, which had the Apocrypha. So this is when the word Apocrypha was uh, used in common uh, language. That is when Martin Luther published the Luther's Bible in 1534. So this had uh, its uh, own separate section, which was called the Intertestamental section, which had the Apocrypha books, what we refer to as the Apocrypha books. And uh, this from then on, uh, coming forward, has been what we refer to as the Apocrypha books. And uh, this is in 1534. However, the African Bible starts, has a longer history than 1534. So when we look at uh, these books and how they impact us, we see like they have always, always been accepted as being part of church doctrine. So there are certain people who are referred to as church fathers. So when we say church, we mean the church and the church is the Catholic church. From the Catholic church so far, they're like over 1.3 billion Catholics, which is the, 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 the population of China, the population of Africa, like Catholics. So um, the church is, that is the biggest church in the world. And from the Catholic Church, we get all of the other Bibles that we now use, which is your version that you are probably reading, which has 66 books. However, when you look into the Catholic Church, their own Bible as a Catholic Church does not have 66 books because it has the extra books which are called the Apocrypha books or hidden books. So in the language of the, in the ecclesiastical language, uh, they are actually called uh, deuterocanonical. No, yeah, what a word, but yeah, it's uh, deuterocanonical. And uh, yeah, forgive me if I'm saying it wrong, but it comes from the word Deuteronomy. So Deuteronomy means, um, this. that's the fifth book in the Torah. And then uh, Deuteronomy refers to the fifth book, which is the second law, which is the Deuteronomy. So the deuterocanonical. Uh, Deuteronomical, the Deuteronomical books <laughs> are uh, referred to as the Apocrypha books. So um, the the church sends uh, the fathers like Jerome, right? Um, uh, Malatus of Sardis, uh, Pope Innocent, um, all of these people. Who else? Augustine. All of these people like Malatus, Jerome, uh, Malatus, Augustine, and Pope Innocent the first. All of these people are regarded as very, uh, like, they're, they're, they're big shots in the church. So if you do the um, uh, scholarly work and you have any reference to uh, Catholic uh, anything or the ecclesiastical um, history, you are going to find those three people as being key figures, such as Augustine, such as um, um, 
Malito. Uh, uh, Did I say Malitus? Because I'm thinking of Thales. Malito. So Malito of Sardis is uh, one of the the church fathers, one of the leading fathers, who was actually called a person who walked with the Holy Spirit, a eunuch. So he was um, a person who, um, who died in eight, 180. So this is as, as far back as 180. He died in 180. And he regarded the the Apocrypha, what we say the Apocrypha, because the Apocrypha is a word we started using in 1534. But before, it was just called... Um, it was just called the Deuterocanonical, the Deuterocanonical book. So um, he regarded all of these um, to be all of these books that are now in the Apocrypha, the intertestamental book, as part of the Old Testament. Augustine regarded them as part of the Old Testament. Pope Innocent the First regarded them as part of the Old Testament. But there's, they've always had certain um, aspects that or certain, certain people who have believed that, all right, no, they are not part of the actual Bible, but they are part of um, the deuterocanonical, Ditro which means that the second canon. So the church law is called canon law, which is just the rule of the church, the church law and the Bible and all of that. It's called canon law. So when we say deuterocanonical, it just means the second canon. So they accept it as being the second canon or they say, um, is it so? So the debate, so the 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 debate that they have in the church is not whether or not these books are are good or bad. The debate is whether they should be called ecclesiastical, which means just for the church, or they should be called uh, canonical, which means it is a part of the canon. So certain people regard that, like certain church fathers, regard them as being part of canon part of the Old Testament and certain people regard them as being part of uh, the church or ecclesiastical books which is um, what we have so when we are hearing about Martin Luther how he reformed things it was because of this because he had his own Bible and this is where the Apocrypha started with the hidden text and this is how like uh, he is regarded as being part of a church reformer. So in the Luther in in Luther's Bible in 1534, this is when it the the books in the apocrypha, the deuterocanonical or the ecclesiastical or these books of exhortation are published within the within the Bible as intertestimonial because there's an Old Testament and New Testament. So they were just placed in the middle of the old and the new so that uh, they they uh, they are read by people because they were uh, hidden before. So when he published them, they were called like a hey, he published a text of the apocrypha. So this is when we started using the word apocrypha. But the church since uh, before, since the first century, have always known these to be part of their own uh, understanding, their their own scripture, their own literature, and part of their reading. So. This has been happening since forever. And if you haven't had that opportunity to read them, it is just because that is why they're now called Apocrypha, because they're now hidden in plain sight, because um, people can read them and they're not evil or anything, because the church itself has its own Bible that has these books. And uh, the oldest Bible in the world is not the King James or anything, but it is the Ethiopian Bible, which has these books, including including uh, the book of um, Enoch. So all of these books are actually part of how they make decisions as a church or as clergy. So they're ecclesiastical. So when we look into this, um, some of the books that really, really um, fascinate me are books that are to do with wisdom because wisdom is the principal thing. So therefore, get wisdom. So I'm going to be going over the book of the Wisdom of Solomon, which is just called the Wisdom of Solomon or the Book of Wisdom. And uh, through this, I, I, I'm pretty sure this is going to enrich your life because wisdom is the principal thing and through all of this this is how we uh, get there so um, when we look into that wisdom of Solomon book it is speaking about how knowledge is supreme how knowledge is uh, the supreme thing that is uh, a gift from God by grace given to the people who are righteous so that they can uh, have excellence or they, they can have perfection of knowledge through art and action.
This is what the book is speaking about in a nutshell. And uh, everything that is in those books is actually showing us uh, certain aspects of wisdom. It's called the Book of Wisdom. So this is a huge book huge in the sense of its impact not size so uh when we look at these books in the apocrypha it's also um um interesting to 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 know the fact that uh part of the the books that were published in the luther's bible as intertestamental books were the apocrypha books but um there were also other books that are now in the new testament which are namely the the book of Hebrews, the book of James, uh, the books of John, and the Revelation of John. And so it's Hebrews, James, John, and the book of Jude. And these books are all the ones that are at the end of the of the of the New Testament, uh, save the book of Peter, First and Second Peter. So it's uh, that actually that's actually the order of them. And these books were regarded as being part of the uh the apocrypha but then they were they were they were just placed in a different um uh, locality within the bible but then these books are in the same are, are are of the same regard for example the book of hebrews no one really knows who wrote it the book of jude the book of jude is actually quoting things that are in the in the in the ethiopian bible or in the book of enoch so all of uh, these books are actually integrated into one package. So it is um, the people who don't have knowledge who perish. But uh, so, so yeah, so going through this, you're going to discover that all of these um, uh, will trace to them being re written uh, by, pe by Jews who were in Africa, who were in Egypt. And uh, through this, this is the Septuagint. So if you've ever heard of the Septuagint, the Septuagint was 70 scholars who are Jews, but who are also affiliated with the Greeks. So they wrote the, the they, they translated the Bible in Egypt, in Africa, so that uh, people could read it in Greece. So Greece did not have, like the Western world did not have this type of information. But it was um, it was exported from this place, Alexandria, and it was exported from Africa, and it went to different places. And this is how we actually get these uh, deuterocanonical books and uh, the apocrypha and uh, the ecclesiastical books. And these books are regarded by churches such as the Catholic Church, the um, the, the the Orthodox Church, which is the second biggest church in the world, the Russian Church um, in the Caucasus Mountains, that one, and uh, the Syrian Church, um, the Anglican Church recognizes this as being part of their, uh, they call it like liturgies, but they recognize, the Anglican Church recognizes these books as being part of what they actually uh, regard as being uh, works of renown, right? And then the Methodist Church, the Moravian Church, all of the churches basically know this, and uh, the Catholic Bible is comprised of this, and the the Catholic is the church. So, uh, understanding what is in these books will give you a grasp on certain patches or maybe things that you've had questions about. So, looking into them might be beneficial if you are looking for wisdom knowledge and understanding so uh this is why this video is here so <laughs> so uh this is this video is not going to tell you what's in it if you want to know you have to go read it and just download it you know the age of information you know so just do what you got to do if you want to do it and uh hopefully reap the benefits and the rewards of knowledge so uh n knowledge or the perfection of knowledge is wisdom and when this uh knowledge is perfected this gives you the perfection or the success or prosperity in your arts and in your actions and uh, this is what we're going to be going over when we go into what we what is referred to as the book of wisdom or the wisdom of solomon which is a part of these deuterocanonical books which is part of the apocrypha whatever you decide to call them but it's just part of the bible so knowing um all of this is going to give you an extended understanding of reality and an extended understanding of spirituality. So I hope that you can join me on this journey and that we can grow together, be together, and live as kings here on earth 
and in heaven kings and queens right <laughs> so yeah i'll see you soon and uh take care god bless you